And I realized that I tend to have relationships with people that are based on my feelings. And my feelings are usually warm. I want to be close to people. I want to be friends. I want things to work out. I'm very tolerant of people's problems and time constraints. I often uh, try to make things convenient for others. And that is all a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> This is the, the most important moment in the panel. <laughs> I think you could stop right there. Um, I thought maybe I would just share with you some funny tidbits I have about the art world. Um, I've been given some various uh, pieces of very interesting advice. Um, one very prominent New York dealer told me that if I could just stop making my paintings so big, they could sell them and it would be, they could sell them to a ton of people and my career would just rise really fast and that I really should start doing that. You could have cut them up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I just, I thought that was really hilarious and I knew he was right. Um, <laughs> but. I just like immediately ordered like the biggest stretcher bars I could get into my studio because I just figure like, who cares? I don't know. Um, and then um, pricing work. I've had a lot of conversations about this. Um, and I mean, I just want to say in advance, I don't want this to come off in, an, in an, um, a, a poor way. I'm really just sharing this because we're at, I'm at my college and there's so many women in the audience. <laughs> but um, you know, it's still a really intense thing about pricing your art as a woman artist. And I feel that my work should be priced at a different area than it is, given my accomplishments and my time on task. But it probably, and I'm not totally upset with where it is, but the men of my generation who in some cases have done less than I have, their prices are way more than mine. And you can sometimes talk to people about this and they get it. Um, and a lot of times people will argue with you about this and be like, oh, well, they had that show in New York at blah -de blah Gallery. And you're like, well, I had this at da-da-da-da-da. And you find yourself doing this tit-for-tat, tit-for-tat, column A, column B. And you just don't have a penis. And that's it. <laughs> so, um, uh, so you know, and then some people will say the following, they'll say, well, um, you know, the market just can't bear a woman at this price range. And you know, you're like, so, it's frustrating. I did have, I'll share this funny conversation I had uh, with a woman uh, gallerist in Los Angeles. Um, and I was in a group show last spring and Mary Heileman was in the show. And there was a Mary Heilman painting in the show. Obviously, it was quite beautiful. It was um, about this big. And um, I believe the cost of it was $225,000. And this was like printed on the price list. So, and the uh, gallerist, I was standing with her in front of the painting. We were saying, oh, this painting is so beautiful. And the, um, and the gallerist said, God, I can't believe how much money it is. I hope Acme sells it. And I looked at her and I was like, that's really not a lot of money for a Mary Heilman painting. I was, and you know, Mary Heilman has had um, a, a woman artist who's been working for so long and has only now just really gotten the kind of um, widespread acclaim that she really deserves. I mean, she's been influencing artists for so many years, a real painter's painter. And this price that her work is, was being asked for was entirely reasonable given the scope and breadth of her career. And certainly the male artists of her same stature who are in the same position, their work is going three times for this price. And no one is telling them or saying about their work, oh my gosh, I can't believe Bryce Martin is painting is this much money. And I'm having this conversation with a woman gallerist and I was just sort of embarrassed and upset, so I kind of schooled her a little. 
and it walked her through. And then I said, you know, I bet you five years ago, Mary Holloman's painting was not this much, which only adds to the reason why this conversation is ridiculous, because she hasn't even been requesting prices like this, you know, throughout her career. So it's frustrating. But, you know, what do you do? You just keep on keeping on. You know, I think also you have to not be afraid to talk in a very neutral way about money. I um, yeah, I uh, did a studio visit with Sarah Charlesworth uh, a few years ago, um, and uh, the it was for a show at Von Lintel Gallery that she was being curated into, and um, Von Lintel was there. Another guy who was working there was there. I was there, and I couldn't believe it when she just said straight out, "Okay, the production cost for this piece is going to be ten thousand dollars." and I, the gallery will pick it up. And it, the, it was shocking to me that I was shocked, too, because mm -hmm. it made me realize how uh, unaccustomed we are to hearing women just talk in a very matter-of-fact way about financial um, situations. It's true. I think you know, it, money is seen as this kind of evil uh, thing, and you're not supposed to talk about it. But if you don't... So you have to develop your own, like, mm -hmm. like you said, I think that's really true. You have to be upfront and direct without, it's a delicate balance. And, and I think you were saying something about, um, uh, you know, this idea of friendship and business being separate. And it's so complicated in the art world because, you know, the people, you go out for drinks with people, you hang out, you chit chat, you, you, you want, you, you like them. They're, they're, you know, you have so much in common. And yet at the end of the day, it is a business. So, and um, it's a lot to negotiate. It's quite tricky to negotiate the friendship level, the business, and um, it's, it's incredibly complicated. And I think if you happen to naturally have a good sort of social uh, ability to deal with people and have a um, kind of a social acumen, you can, you can navigate it. But if you don't, you really have to uh, think about it and uh, be careful. Esther, I'm just curious. Um, in you've talked a little bit about pricing your work to the three of us privately, um, and about not necessarily expecting to make a profit, but mm -hmm. to just cover your expenses. Mm -hmm. um, in your experience with the galleries where you've shown. Has the gallerist pretty much set the prices, or has it been a more um, give and take negotiation? Um, the gallerist has set the price because um, I actually, when I <clears throat> when I started to sell my work, I actually didn't know what the marketplace would be, and I felt that they were <clears throat> in a position to to sell the work. I wanted that to be possible for the gallery or else they wouldn't be willing to take up their real estate with my work on their wall. Yeah. Um, I think the big discovery for me was that I could charge the production costs off the top. Um, it's hard to believe, but at the beginning I was um, taking on all the production costs and then we were splitting the sale price. Well. <laughs> When, when the gallery decided to give a courtesy discount to a good customer, which of course was their good customer, not my good customer, um, I realized that I actually wouldn't make a profit at all. And uh, that's when I realized I had to figure out a way to negotiate to have the production costs be deducted. And it, it's for each panel, it's um, depending on the size, it could be a couple hundred dollars. That has nothing to do with the, the price of taking the photograph, just the production cost of taking the negative or the file and making the print. And then the framing is paid for by the eventual owner. I actually buy all the frames. My gallery won't frame my work. I have to pay that price. So I have a large uh, storage area with very valuable works of art which I own because I've wanted at one time or another to have in a show and have up on a wall. Uh, I decided that the only way to move forward was to 
take those costs on and hope for the best. The best um, has had some problems because my big show was in September of uh, 2008, which wasn't a good time to have a show. Right. Um, I, one of the sub-themes of an artist's life is emerging from this conversation at this point, the, the dirty behind the wings secret real estate, the gallerist's real estate, the artist's real estate in terms of studio and home, real estate in terms of storage costs of work not sold. Um, that is a very complicated piece of the puzzle of artists' lives. Um, but I think that the conversation is moving directly into the question concerning gender. Does gender matter in your professional life? Have you seen any changes in that during your career? <laughs> yeah, of course gender matters. It does. And um, I, I don't feel like my career at this point has been long enough to notice a huge change necessarily, but obviously I think that it's much better for me now at my age and my point in my career than it was for a person half a generation or even so. A lot of progress has been made. I think the mistake is to believe that progress has been accomplished, we are finished. And um, I find it funny when I bump into women, and hopefully there are none in the audience, who uh, believe that we are in a post-feminist moment. And I think post-feminism my ass, because I don't know what city you're living in, but I live in Los Angeles, and if it's not post-feminist there, I don't know where it is. Um, so, you know, it's that kind of stuff that drives me crazy. I also felt that, you know, who's ever, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, just watching the primary elections for the Democrats was so revealing in terms of what our culture thinks about women and how we attack women and how we'll go after women about any little thing. And just watching Hillary Clinton get eaten up. I mean, whether you're a Hillary fan or you're not, you could still observe it as powerful information. Um, so I think all of this stuff matters and is still uh, on the table. Um, but I certainly don't want to paint a picture that it was as hard. Uh, I think there's a generation of women who had it so much harder. And so I don't want to uh, even allude to that. It's as, I mean, I want to say that it's still hard, but I don't want to take away how much harder it was for another generation. And, and thank them, because the reason it's easier now is because they did fight and work and continue to work and to continue to show and to be defiant. So. Casey, I haven't really focused on the stable of artists at Foley. Is it more male than female artists? Uh, Just out of curiosity. It's pretty good, actually, yeah. um, unlike most galleries, uh, that definitely men are still being shown the majority of the time, even though the majority of women in MFA program, I mean, the majority of students in MFA programs are women. Um, so there's definitely something that's happening in that gap between finishing MFA and becoming a showing working artist. Um, I think it has a lot to do with just old-fashioned sexism, like you're talking about, um, women wanting to start families, uh, socialization to play supporting roles rather than starring roles, which makes women then go into curating or something that's you know a little bit more um, letting someone else have the you know be the.